How good will the West Virginia Mountaineers be in 2022? Now, Neil Brown is going into year four with the program. They went six and seven last year, and they had some really close losses. You lost to Oklahoma 16 to 13. You lost to Maryland 30 to 24. You had a really close loss to Texas Tag 23 to 20. And with a better offense, you most likely win those games. Now, I'm not somebody who likes to go off what ifs and what could have happened, but I really feel if West Virginia's offense just had a little bit of a pulse, they probably would have had a nine win, maybe eight win season last year. Now, their over under win total is at five and a half, which kind of surprises me because there are a lot of people who kind of think that West Virginia could be a sleeper pick to win the Big 12 this year. And I kind of understand why a lot of people may not have a lot of confidence in West Virginia because they lost a lot of talent. They're going to have several new starters this year. But I mean, they have a new offensive coordinator and Graham Harrell. So hopefully he can get some juice going into this offense because that's what they need. They need some juice. You ever try to squeeze some juice out of an orange? And you just couldn't get no juice to come out. That was West Virginia's offense, man. It it was really tough to watch. And trust me, I've seen some really bad offenses last year, such as Iowa and Wisconsin. But West Virginia's offense was just as bad as those. So by bringing in Graham Harrell, I'm really excited to see what he does with this offense. And plus, you get JT Daniels from the transfer portal. Now, JT Daniels is a really good quarterback. He has, unfortunately been unable to stay on the field due to injuries and last year if he never would have went down with that injury for Georgia he probably could have led them to the same amount of success that they would have had with Stetson Bennett and they probably would have been a lot better and as a matter of fact there are many Georgia fans that will tell you and say that the best quarterback wasn't starting for Georgia all of last year pretty much outside of the Clemson game so for JT Daniels as long as he can stay healthy, I think West Virginia is going to be pretty solid on offense. You shouldn't have the performance that you had last year. The fact that you have a new OC and having a solid starter at the quarterback position, I definitely think that this offense should do nothing but take a step up. Tony Manthis is most likely going to be your RB1 this year. I love the talent that he have at wide receiver. You got Bryce Ford Wheaton, Sam James, Caden Prather there. Now, Wheaton is probably one of the more underrated receivers in the Big 12. A lot of people probably don't know about him, but he was second on the team in receiving yards. He had 575 of them. 42 receptions and three touchdowns. You also look at Sam James. I think he was pretty solid. 42 catches for 505 receiving yards and five touchdowns. And this receiving core should be a lot better with the fact that now you have a solid quarterback throwing you the football. Then your offensive line. Your offensive line, I think it should be slightly above average it could be average but I think that the offensive line should definitely improve compared to what it was last year and honestly I don't really think that all the sacks were strictly on the offensive line I kind of feel like the quarterback they had last year was holding on to the ball too long he kind of was trying to do a little bit too much at times which is why he wasn't able to take care of the football so now with JT Daniels back there I think you're going to have a better performance from the offensive line now with the fact that you have a quarterback that's going to know when to get rid of the ball then on defense even though you are going to have a couple of new faces there starting for you. This defense has been pretty good over the last couple of years under Neil Brown. And this defense was a reason why West Virginia was able to hang around in some of those games that we just listed off earlier against Texas Tech, Oklahoma, whatnot. And their defense almost won them the game against Oklahoma. So if they can get a better offense that isn't going three and out every single possession, this defense definitely could end up being better than what it was last season. That's without some of the guys that they had on this unit last year. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people don't realize this in football. You can have a good defense and it's still not perform at a really high level because the offense ends up holding it back. 
And you may say, JT, how does offense impact the defense? Well, I think it's pretty common sense that if your offense continues to go through and out and can't sustain drives and can't stay on the field long, that puts your defense back on the field for more plays than what they should be on the field for. So if you have an offense that can routinely move the chains and keep the defense on the sidelines, it's going to give your defense a little bit more time to rest, recruit, and then they won't end up coming back on the field so gassed. So for West Virginia's defense, I think the fact that you're going to have an improved offense this year is going to greatly impact this defense in a positive way. Now, you have a really good defensive line. One of the best defensive lines in the Big 12 this year. Dante Stills, Jordan Jefferson, Todd Austin. Now, their linebacker position, they have a really weird name for it. They call it Bandit. Jordan Barlett is somebody who I think could have a breakout position or a breakout season at the Bandit position. He played in 13 games, started in a couple of them. He had 31 tackles for three and a half sacks. I think that if he continues to develop over the course of fall camp, I think that he could end up being one of the better linebackers in the Big 12 or one of the better bandits in the bigger in the Big 12. I don't know if everybody's calling this position bandit now. I doubt it, but it's a cool name to give to it. I ain't I'm not gonna lie, bandit. Okay. At cornerback, you have Charles Woods, who had two interceptions last season, a couple of pass breakups. Definitely someone to keep an eye on for. He could be one of the more underrated corners in the Big 12 Conference this season. You have a transfer from North Dakota State, Jazir Cox there. So West Virginia, I think that this defense is still going to be pretty good. This offense definitely should improve. I don't really think the offense can get no worse than what it was last year. It was just abysmal to watch. And for their schedule, you get tested right away. You got to play Pitt on the road on a Thursday night. Tough, tough, tough. And Pitt is coming off pretty much the best season that they have ever had in the history of their football program. It's going to be really interesting to see how West Virginia looks in that matchup because Pitt is going to be a pretty good football team on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. So if West Virginia could win that game, I think that a lot of Mountaineers fans are going to have a lot of optimism about what's to come. Now, you do get to play Kansas, Townsend, Virginia Tech on the road in Blacksburg there. I think that West Virginia should be able to win all three of those games. So you end up going on the road into that Texas matchup, either 4-0 or 3-1. Most likely 3-1. Now, Texas is a really intriguing team. I don't know how good their defense is going to be, but offensively, they're going to be able to put up a lot of points. And after you play that game, you have a bye week, then you enter the meat and potatoes of conference play. You got Baylor, Texas Tech on the road, which a lot of people think Texas Tech could be a big sleeper in this conference. You got TCU, you got Iowa State coming off a little bit of a lackluster season. Then you got OU, Kansas State, and Oklahoma State on the road there. So for West Virginia, I think that they have a strong chance of being able to win the Big 12. Because the Big 12 is a conference this season that there's a lot of unknown when it comes to a lot of these teams. Look at Oklahoma State. You know, how is Oklahoma State going to adjust to losing so much talent on the defense side of football? Plus, I believe they lost their defensive coordinator, if I'm not mistaken. Then offensively, their off the line wasn't that great. They didn't really have a lot of playmakers on that side of the ball anyway. So I don't really know how good Oklahoma State's going to be. Kansas State is a sleeper that a lot of people are pretty high on, but people have been telling me that for the last three years, and I still haven't really been all that impressed with Kansas. Oklahoma definitely is going to be really good. I definitely think they are capable of being able to win at least nine, ten games year one under Brent Venables. They got Jeff Levy at offensive coordinator, so they're going to be pretty solid. Iowa State. Don't really know what to think of them. We know that they're always pretty good defensively, but how's the offense going to look this year? And Baylor, you know, Baylor under Dave Aranda, they had a lot of success last season. Are they going to be able to replicate that success this year? So for West Virginia, 
I definitely see a good opportunity for them to be able to have a shot at competing for the Big 12 title this year because I don't really think that there's any team going into this season that really stands out that you can look at and be like, oh, yeah, man, like, JT, this is the team. A lot of people think it could be Texas, but I don't know if Texas is going to have a defense this year. And even if their offense does end up clicking, which I believe that it will, when you have offense that good, your defense is going to be on the field for a lot of plays. So it gives West Virginia opportunity to be able to score a lot of points on their defense as well. So I think for West Virginia, I think they're being a little bit slept on. At five and a half, I'll take that. I'll put some money on that easily. I definitely think that there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to get the six wins. Now, the floor is going to be at six. Now, what is the ceiling for West Virginia this year? Could you say nine wins? I probably would go eight. So, I think that West Virginia probably would be a seven-win team. I could see them going at eight at best. But I wouldn't be surprised if we could see them winning nine games or maybe popping off and winning at least ten and making it to, you know, one of their major New Year's Six Bowl games because the Big 12 is a conference that... You know, there's a lot of question marks around a lot of these teams. And when you look at West Virginia, the biggest problem that they really had last year was their offense. And now you improve that by bringing in a new offensive coordinator and Graham Harrell. And you have JT Daniels at quarterback. As long as JT Daniels can stay healthy, I think that West Virginia most definitely should be in the mix for the Big 12 this year.